Well, as always, I hope you're keeping well and safe. And as you can see, the um, latest arch top mandolin has uh, moved on considerably since the last video. And um, if you're interested to know how I got here, there's lots of photographs and details um, of the process on my blog. If you follow my work, you'll know that the last thing that I do, the last kind of major bit of woodwork, if you like, is uh, shaping the neck. And the purpose of this video is really to show you how I go about that process. So let's take you back in time and you can see um, how I did this. So I thought I'd just quickly show you the main tools I use for shaping a neck. This half round um, handmade Swiss rasp, I had that for, for about 40 years, absolutely brilliant. Um, one of these Japanese Shinto saw rasps, again a brilliant tool for rapid removal of wood. And um, I've used many different types of spoke shaves, but my favourite one at the moment is one of these um, Veritas ones, which is clearly modelled on, evolved from the more traditional wooden um, style. So apart from the abrasive papers, cabinet scrapers, these would be the main tools that you see in use. So I've just finished polishing the frets. The next step for me is to um, carve the neck. And as I've said in some of the previous videos, I always leave this step to the last. So you can see that I've left the, the neck um, square and the simple reason is I find it easier to work with it um, this way. You can hold the instrument firmly in the vise, work on the frets etc. Um, and particularly on these, these carved instruments where there's no flat surface, they can be quite tricky to hold. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to work on this front view if you like, remove the waste either side of the fretboard first and um, blend the fretboard extension nicely into the into the body. So kind of working on, on the plan view. So that's the uh, sort of front profile done. Uh, most of the waste removed, maybe to about half a mil shy of the uh, fretboard there, and this part of the um, fretboard extension blended in nicely. So what I'm going to do now is um, work on the depth of the neck. And what I tend to do is to do one section here, one section there to the um, to about a millimetre shy of my final depth and then the bit that's left in the middle I then take off
So I'm kind of at the stage now where it, it's the neck's been roughly carved. Um, I'm refining the, um, the profile. I always have my necks a kind of a very neutral, um, rounded curve. I don't really like you know the pronounced V-necks. Um, and <coughs> what, what what I do whilst I'm working is look at the edge of the fretboard and compare it to the um, to what I can see of the neck. A bit like um, the sort of the bars you you, you put on on a framework to check whether it's twisting or not. And as I gradually rotate that, right now I'm at that point, I can see that we're okay along here, but there's a bit of a lump there. And if I rotate that a little bit more, yeah, I can see that there's definitely a lump there, so I need to take a bit off, 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 off of that. And that's, that's the way that um, I, I progress. And um, another little handy tool, <laughs> if tool is the right word, is this. It was inspired by the, by the good old fret rock. It was a piece of old acrylic I had knocking about. But of course, it's ideal. It's ideal for checking that the neck is, there aren't any lumps and bumps in the neck. You know, you can put that on there and, and I eyeball that quite nicely. So as I say, along the back edge there, it's absolutely fine. But then as I, I rotate it, um, I can see that, um, you know, it, it needs more here where, where I haven't quite gotten into, into the heel. And so I find that really quite useful, a useful tool. So make yourself a giant fret rocker. And the other thing I find useful is one of these, um, these profile gauges because you get a much better impression of what the, the curve looks like. And of course, if you if you if you if you uh, use it in one position, you can then turn it around and check that the uh, that the neck's symmetrical. So let's say something else as a, as a useful way of of checking your your progress. So the the heel cap's been glued on, and um, I'm almost there with the heel need to do a bit more refinement around the sort of the nut area there where the neck blends into the head and you've got the volute oh there goes the dehumidifier so i need to sort that area out there um, make sure that the neck is the curve that i want and, the, and that both halves are symmetrical and then you know concentrate on getting rid of all of the marks that the rasp has left and I'll probably take those out of a combination of a cabinet scraper and abrasive paper. So yeah, it's one big kind of refinement and clean up operation now. I've just sprayed some water on the neck, which, um, as you know, raises the grain. But also, areas like the join between the uh, the neck and the fretboard, what was smooth a moment ago where I sanded it, I can now feel where the neck is, where, it's, where the grain is lifted up slightly. So that can all be sanded again flat and smooth. Um, so really, what, I, what, what I'm into now is um, finishing off the neck but as I'm finishing off the neck, I'll gradually then start sanding everything else and um, this will be the start of the final cleanup of the whole instrument. Well, I hope you found that of interest. And as always, you know, many, many thanks for taking the time and trouble to actually watch, watch the video. So what's next? Well, obviously I've got to make up the bridge. I'll be doing that in a moment. Attach the towel piece, tuners on and uh, make the nut and then we can get it playing. Um, once I've been through that process, it will be stripped down again and um, the French polishing will begin, which of course you've seen in other videos. So hopefully by the end of the summer, um, I should be able to offer this up for sale 
um, on my website. So if you're interested in this, in, in buying this mandolin, um, keep your eye on my for, for sale page and you'll see when I say it's up and it's ready. So in the meantime, you take care and um, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, keep safe. Cheers.